Hello, I'm Rex Schildhaus, and uh, because things on the internet seem to lose their date references pretty quick, today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023, and uh, this video will probably be released in several days. I have several of them to make uh, due to a recent trip to Arizona, to uh, Mesa, Phoenix, Tucson areas, and uh, this video is about a trip we made on, if I can keep my dates right, uh, March 11th, Sunday, March 11th, uh, to Karchner Caverns, I think that's how it's pronounced. And uh, these markers, I'm reading the book right now. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the pictures out of this book. This book is copyrighted. When I show you the pictures, uh, I don't charge these, they're on YouTube, they're free. Uh, the reason I'm showing you these pictures is I'm trying to get you uh, to appreciate what these are, and this is a, a net, what, what these caverns are. And uh, uh, my cousin Jim and Ramona, who live in the, in the Tucson area, said, you gotta go see this, my neighbor, uh, Les, uh, says he has to go see these caverns. So uh, my cousin Jim and Ramona set up uh, a tour. There's two tours for this. You're supposed to make reservations ahead of time. Excellent, excellent uh, visitors reception area. Fantastic work in the cavern itself and the caverns, the, the, the rooms in the caverns. Uh, our guide was uh, Laurel. Uh, she was absolutely super. Uh, the, the, I think we spent maybe an hour inside the cavern on the tour we had. We had, we didn't get the big room. I'll show you the map uh, somewhere in there, somewhere along the line. I'll show you a map uh, as to what these uh, what these caverns are. It's this book talks about. Well, you won't be able to see it, but you'll see this. I'll, I'll detail it. So we did not get the throne room or the rotunda. We got the big room, uh, the main corridor, whatever we got. Uh, <laughs> this place is beautiful. A and to keep it beautiful, they work really hard at doing several things. And number one is they work really hard at showing you as much as they possibly can. Uh, number two, in trying to keep it beautiful, they try to restrict you so that they can keep the caverns proper for the next visitor. So they ask you to do some interesting things and, uh, and, and to preserve it, they actually have it chambered off so that they can maintain the humidity and temperature of the cavern naturally because they've opened up the mountains. Uh, to get you in and out. Uh, I, I love logic, excessive compulsive micro perfectionist, uh, and, and they have set this up to be very friendly. It's it's ADA. Uh, if you're w dealing in a wheelchair, you're going to need a pusher. So um, just about anybody can see this place. If you're claustrophobic. Uh, I would take somebody you trust, but there's nothing really tight about this place. There's there's no 18-inch uh, wide, 14-inch high holes you have to crawl through. You're you're going to be on your feet the whole time. You're going to be walking, and uh, it's not cold. It's actually warm. Uh, my recommendation is uh, shed your jackets, uh, your your sweatshirts, uh, whatever else before you go in, uh, because it is warm and it is humid. And if you're wearing glasses, uh, they brief you on, you're, they're probably going to fog up uh, as, as you walk in. And then once everything comes up to temperature and, and humidity stabilize, uh, your glass will clear up. You cannot take photos inside on this tour. That disappointed me. Uh, I, I don't know why, other than the fact that when your flash goes off, then you have blind people around you. But um, there are photos in here in this book. And these tabs are because I'm reading this book. So I'm going to show you some of the photos out of this book. 
uh, if you're going to make a tour there, definitely make reservations ahead of time. I, I would recommend it. I don't know if you can do it. I don't know if they will let it. Uh, there's two tours. Uh, and, and, and they start various times during the day, so it's not just two tours a day. There's two different routes of tours with multiple tours during the day. I would recommend you try to get both of them. Uh, simply because this is an absolutely beautiful area. If you only get one of them, uh, we got the non-throne uh, room, non-big room, whatever it's called, tour. And we were on site for probably three hours. And uh, quite honestly, we were a bit rushed because we had some other places we wanted to go. And we were trying to hopscotch through uh, three or four different places uh, that day on, on uh, Sunday. Uh, so plan on at least three hours. Excellent uh, visitor center, lots of displays and stuff to read. And I like to look at a display and read a display while I'm there. On trips like this I end up shooting the display, shooting the sign, and then moving on, shooting the next one, and, and moving on. So uh, personal recommendation, uh, plan on three or more hours. You cannot bring food or beverages uh, into uh, the caverns. Uh, you don't need them. Tour is not that long. Uh, it's not hot. It's not cold. It's cool, and it's very humid. So you aren't going to get uh, dried out. You're not going to like. You're not out in the sun. And there are. Uh, you can eat out in the parking lot. I think there's picnic tables out there too. So uh, free parking. Uh, it's a but but uh, make reservations. Uh, my recommendation. So I'm going to show you this um, uh, of of this dash to Arizona for I think we're gone for six days. Uh, this was probably the number one place. Let's move on to this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you do it. it. It's a phenomenal. It's a phenomenal tour. Thanks for watching. This is uh, the cover of the book by Neil Miller about the Kirchner Caverns, and I highly recommend you buy it. Uh, it's available at the gift shop if you want to direct support uh, the caverns. Uh, or, quite honest, a recommendation is go to the um, to online, buy it online, read it before you before you go to the caverns. Um, I'm going to show you some of the photos uh, from this book. Um, it's not designed to be opened and copied, and it is copyrighted. I'm trying to show you the quality of this book. It, it's superb. This is called Cave Bacon, and it's beautiful colors. Uh, this is a good sized uh, chunk. I can't remember exactly how big this is. But it's a good size chunk and uh, uh, good size slabs. The colorations are caused by uh, various minerals as they come down. Uh, they get uh, left behind as the water continues to drip down. This is Randy Tuff, uh, one Tuff's one of the um, discoverers of the caverns. Uh, his silhouette, and this is the big room. Um, <laughs> Look at his size in relation to the slag mites. Slag tights hold tight to the ceiling. Slag mites hold tight to the floor and might reach the ceiling. This is the strawberry room. Uh, these are pipe slag tights. Uh, they're hollow and uh, they're, they're very long, several feet long. Amazing. And this is what they're trying to preserve by having the caverns set up this way. You can't walk over there. You're, you're on a uh, very well constructed, very well protected uh, walkway in a uh, confined in a cavern so that when you see this today, say uh, 2023, and you bring your granddaughter, your grandson back in 40 years, it should look the same. This is the Kubla Khan formation, uh, and it is in the throne room. Uh, down at the bottom, that's a person standing there. If you want to know how big these are, if you're claustrophobic and you're, you're worried about small spaces, 
there are some spaces smaller than this in the caverns uh, but the, there's no space that's less than uh, five feet wide and eight feet tall uh, so if you're claustrophobic take somebody you trust in, and you should be able to navigate the caverns without a problem this was beautiful this is the mud flats area it's one of the rooms that we got to see uh, and it's called the mud flats because it's not in the photo but underneath it you actually have mud flats and when they were initially exploring the caverns they walked across it and that was uh, 40 years ago and and they're still there so anything done to the cavern is there for a long time that's why there's no paint cans allowed no pop no no candy wrappers whatever uh, it's kept very clean very very nicely preserved another interesting slag tight holding to the ceiling uh, presentation um, these are soda stream straws uh, uh, soda stream slag tights and they just have some really beautiful structure to them uh, really interesting when you see stuff like this and you just you just wonder how nature and God um, used a paintbrush to create this stuff. The caption for this picture says shields and slag tights and there are slag mites uh, if you look down at the bottom. Uh, the slag tights dripping and the uh, minerals left behind uh, hardened set become the slag tights. The water dripping down still contains some minerals and those deposits become the slag mites. Uh, sometime in the future, um, 5,000, 10,000 years, they'll probably meet. In the meantime, they're going to be preserved. This photo is in the shelf passage, uh, slag tight, slag mites, and some of them meet. Uh, so whatever you want to call them. Um, but as I said, this book is copyrighted. I'm not going to show you all the photos in it. All I want to do is show you enough to encourage you to, number one, visit the caverns and respect it because it's a beautiful presentation of what nature can do. And buy the book and serious recommendation, buy the book before you go and read the history and you'll have so much more appreciation for what these caverns are and for what it took for two people in particular, uh, Gary Tenen and Randy Tufts, uh, to get these to be like they are. And you'll understand it, and it's beautiful. I'm gonna show you some of the uh, uh, visitor center photos now that I took. I love it when they give me good photo places to walk into somewhere and, and capture where I'm visiting this was really nice and while I was there I, I took this photo and then several families walked up and I I took photos for them at the same spot um, this is this is just the added touches the visitor center does touch a lot of things uh, this is some of the activities in the area uh, ranging fairly far back um, I think if you could read it it says 1924 uh, it, the visitor center addresses more than just the cavern itself. So paleontology, um, this one came, it was kind of interesting. So um, an unusual cave visitor, a ground sloth, uh, showed up in here. And uh, here's some of his bones and some uh, an image of what he would look like and kind of cool. So the cavern is not there just to show you hey here's a pretty neat hole in the ground the caverns there to explain a whole lot of things and um, how it's working what some of the mysteries that will probably forever remain uh, kind of interesting I, I thought it was great it, it brings forth um, several issues like these guys here um, these guys were in the area and then all of a sudden they disappeared and there was another site about uh, 25 miles south of Karchner Caverns that uh, the University of Arizona is working on. It talks about stuff that kids would be interested in too and uh, why do bats, uh, how, how does the hearing of bats work and their sonar. Uh, kind of cool. Uh, I, to me, I, I love this sort of stuff. I realized I'm saying something wrong. I'm saying the caverns uh, when I'm talking about the visitor center. Um, these 
photos are from the visitor center and the visitor center is trying to teach you more than just about the caverns. So in, in this presentation it's talking about uh, the diverse underworld, underground worlds and how they're created in limestone. Uh, usually created in limestone because water, limestone is so water soluble. Um, it, uh, the water can, can erode it and, and create the caverns very easily. And as the water gets into the limestone, it's carrying minerals uh, that it picked up along the path. And that's where we're seeing the colors and the structures that you see um, pop up here. Um, really nice display on how the Karchner Caverns was formed. I thought this was kind of neat. Basically, water ended up on the surface, uh, came down through the ground, uh, found an exit, and uh, created through erosion, uh, created the caverns. And because it is a living cave, a wet cave, uh, they're working really hard to protect it. That's why you have the limited tours, you have the limited walkways, uh, you have the, the, the isolation chamber to get in if you're claustrophobic, heads up. It's about six feet wide, eight feet high, and probably 20 feet long. They bring you into it and uh, close doors at both ends and then uh, and mist you and the idea is to keep the lint on your clothes so when you get into the caverns itself uh, you aren't linting the cavern because linting the cavern with stuff on, on your clothes would, would contaminate the environment that's the only quote-unquote tough spot that uh, somebody who's claustrophobic might have issues with in the visitor center, there are some really good presentations like this one of some slag mites and some uh, slag tights as we step up to them. And then there are uh, these signs that talk about how water gets into the cave in various manners. It comes in as humid air, it condenses, or, or, it, it, or, or it pools in the area. Uh, which you see in the mud flats area, pooling water, and the water's there for a long time. Uh, it seeps, uh, whatever. So there's numerous ways that the water gets into the caverns, into the limestone, and, and takes the limestone away to create the cavern itself. This stuff is educational, it's well written, it's well presented. I, I just really enjoyed it. More educational stuff about how um, soda straw slag tights uh, form and uh, the cave has some of the longest uh, in the world and uh, that's what they're they are working to protect really good stuff uh, presentations material whatever you want to call it um, about the museum, uh, about the caverns, about the visitor center, and uh, like this presentation sitting up there, and it's got these uh, two side pieces that go along with it, which I brought them out that explain how the uh, the caverns and hydrology science works, uh, physical sciences. Talking about chemistry, and I mentioned it earlier. Um, you can go back in, and if you're knowledgeable, you can look at the various coloring layers uh, and determine what materials they are to see w how the various minerals came into the cave and at what time sequence. How does uh, the drip rates... A lot of really good information about how these things were created. I could have spent probably uh, five to six hours walking around uh, the visitor center reading the... Uh, information. I, I love to do that. Uh, much of it's protected behind behind uh, plastic or glass uh, type um, safety pieces, so it's it kind of hard and and it's not always lit uh, to give you good photo work. I told you I was going to show you a map. Uh, I thought the photo that I had taken of the presentation on. The, uh, in the visitor center was really good didn't turn out as good so um, this is the best I've got it's a huge place if you're interested into a bug's life uh, or troglodytes uh, if you're interested in 1960s uh, rock and roll troglodytes um, there's 
there's quite a bit of information in the visitor center about the caverns and the area and uh, the various creatures that existed in the area which is kind of cool now you're in southern Arizona and uh, in just have to realize that at one time southern Arizona was under salt water and uh, here's a coral presentation that was found in the area I did find uh, some fair um, presentations of the caverns uh, and uh, this is one of them I'm going to shift over to a second one at one time it was called Xanadu uh, before um, Randy and Gary, I think Randy and Gary, um, I don't have the book in front of me, uh, figured out exactly what it was going to become and uh, name it after the people who actually owned the property, Karchners. The visitor center, as I've said several times, addresses more than just the caverns. Uh, here's a map of Cochise County, and there's a lot of information about what's happening in Cochise County and how it got there. It talks about the wildlife that's in the area. Uh, you gotta love cats, uh, gotta, gotta love the javelina. And uh, it talks, because you're in a desert environment, um, it talks about the desert. Now, the last photo I'm going to show you before I call this presentation complete is, and I'm not sure where I got this photo, I didn't take it. I don't have any record as to where or how I've, I've got it, uh, but this is a photo of inside the cavern, uh, and if you're interested in seeing what size relationship you can have, realizing this is only one area, it's not all of it. Some of the areas do get a little smaller, some of the areas get a little bit bigger, some of the areas get taller, uh, but uh, this is one of the areas of the cavern. As I said, I highly recommend you buy the book uh, by Neil Miller before you go. Read the book and then go view the caverns. And if you don't do it that way, after you view the caverns, buy the book. It is a phenomenal visit. Really enjoyed it. I'd like to take my granddaughter back there. She would absolutely go nuts in this place. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.